Well, hi, everyone. My name is Michael Faust. For those who may not know me, um, I'm a paysetter gold and paysetter leader with Daisy. I've been around the home-based referral industry now for 32 years, 33 years this coming February. Uh, during that time, I've built 100,000 person teams and done that, uh, built also many teams of tens of thousands. Uh, I've also had opportunities to found, own, manage companies. We've also actually worked with um, startups on a consulting basis. And over the last 20 years, I've been involved in creating uh, software solutions for network marketing companies or referral-based companies, and also for leaders who are actually, actually large communities. So I just want to give you a bit of background on my sort of qualifications to give you this training today. So let me just bring up the slide and let's make a start of what today is all about. Okay, so the topic for today's session is how to build a fast-growing, large community for maximum income and results. Now, before we get underway, I just want to read a small disclaimer. Today's training is based on the premise, should be, you understand the following. You came here today to create success in your life. You came here with a teachable mindset. You're able to make new decisions on new information. You take responsibility for your decisions and will continue to do so. And know that I won't be discussing anything to do with the past history of Daisy or not be discussing Endotech trading performance or anybody's complaints. So let's get that clear from the start. And I would like to have your undivided attention for what's being presented. So if you need to move to another room, turn the TV off, turn off the computer, um, the other computers, whatever you need to do, because you'll want to pay full attention to today and you'll get the most value. Grab a drink, grab some pen and paper. Uh, understand this is not an interactive session today. There's a lot of content to go through. So I, I won't be taking questions, but we will be doing actually follow-up sessions about the, the topics that are discussed today. So this is only the beginning of a library of content we're going to build to help the actual community. So let's get started. Let us show you how to create wealth and a life-changing income. There are three types of people when it comes to money and wealth creation. Those that spend more than they make those that spend all they make, and those that spend less than they make, putting the surplus to work. There are two ways to create passive cash flow, wealth and financial independence. You have capital like cash, crypto, or other assets to put to work. Or you have insufficient capital, so you must use sweat equity. Financial independence is when you can live off your profits and not eat your capital. True wealth is when you can pay for life's luxuries with your profits while your capital grows. Imagine building capital and generating cash flow from anywhere in the world, any time of day, in any economic environment. With as little as a phone, laptop, and internet connection. You can by doing what venture capitalists do, starting with as little as $100. Did you know Netflix, Shopify, Uber, Airbnb, and many other iconic brands all needed venture capital and the venture capitalists made big profits? What if you could receive equity, rewards, and profits from funding projects with big upside with an outlay as little as $100? The good news is you can by becoming part of a global community that enjoys the same benefits as big venture capital firms real world projects, real opportunity. The first venture capital raise is funding the world's biggest financial technology project, changing the world of AI trading. It's a unique opportunity offering. You'll receive equity in an IPO of a world leading FinTech company. You'll enjoy passive profits from the technology developed by the FinTech company. You can withdraw your earnings anytime or compound your profits to build long-term wealth. You can also earn referral income from sharing the concept with others and building a community. AI plus FinTech equals opportunity. Artificial intelligence, also called AI, is used by all top financial institutions. 
The venture capital raise is funding development of a new super AI. The super AI is designed to create trading profits unseen before. This is one of the world's largest financial technology development projects. Crowdfunding is venture capital raising for the masses. Venture capital companies wanted to fund this project, but were declined. This project is about bringing wealth to the masses, not only institutions. Contribute $100 up to $102,000. You decide your level of contribution. Contribute $102,000 and receive private VIP access to the trading technology being developed. Let's look at the crowdfunding goals for Phase 1. Goal 1 is to raise $10 million for the development and testing of the Super AI. Goal 2 is to raise $500 million for the trading fund for AI development and testing. Profits made in the trading fund are paid out to the crowdfunding community. Currently, the fund is used for both cryptocurrency and forex trading. Future fundraisers are planned for a move into stocks and commodities. Now, let's introduce you to Endotech, the fintech company. Endotech has a team of 60-plus AI scientists, quants, analysts, developers, and researchers. Endotech is a world leader in creating AI financial technology for institutional investment firms. In 2021, a white paper detailing the project was published to get input from the world's top AI and trading minds. Endotech plans to become a public company in 2022, bringing their super AI to the financial world. Meet Dr. Anna Becker, the Endotech CEO. Dr. Anna holds a PhD in AI and has been developing financial technology for 20 plus years. She is an author, speaker, consultant, and world leader in AI financial technology. She previously created and sold a successful financial technology company in the Forex sector. Her technologies are currently used by leading global banks and investment funds. Now let's look at the benefits of a smart contract and why it is used by this project. Smart contracts are a new technology that ensures all promised outcomes are delivered. They operate in a decentralized environment on the blockchain, free from human intervention. Smart contracts provide full transparency of all transactions for your peace of mind. They also allow instant payouts of referral earnings to your personal wallet that you control. Why did this project choose the Tron blockchain? And what are the benefits? The Tron blockchain is among the fastest and most scalable blockchains available. The Tron blockchain is also the top emerging decentralized app platform. Lastly, the Tron blockchain has very low transaction fees for transferring funds. Let's now explore the benefits for passive crowdfund contributors. Firstly, 50 to 70% of your contribution goes to the trading fund, earning passive trading rewards. Indotech historically has developed an average annual profit of 200% and compounding the profits. The goal of the super AI development is to increase previous trading results up to four times. Lastly, you will receive exclusive equity shares in the IPO of Indotech, planned for 2022. What are the benefits for referring contributors? You can create a supplementary income or life-changing income from referral commissions. You can receive a share of all crowdfunding contributions and all trading rewards generated globally. You can receive additional equity shares in the IPO when qualified for various incentive programs. You can also use your referral income to fund additional crowdfunding contributions, creating more income. Let's check out the progress for the first six months of the project. More than 150,000 crowdfund contributors in 100 plus countries have participated. Over 200 million USDT has been raised in crowdfund contributions. Two projects have been successfully launched, with more to come in 2021. Five, six, and seven figure referral incomes have been earned by contributors. Imagine owning equity in real world projects that can become major success stories. Imagine earning passive profit rewards and having priority access to lucrative opportunities. Imagine building cash flow and wealth 
building a community of fellow venture capitalists. Get started today and begin your own venture capital journey. Get back to the person who shared this opportunity with you to learn more or get started. Ask your question. What's your magic number? What I'm asking is, what do your dreams actually cost? Everything that you want in life generally can come down to a, a number, an actual value placed upon it to enable that to happen. Whether it's creating your or living in your dream home, whether you buy it or design it, whether you would like to have a beautiful motor car, all these things have values. If you go to the real estate agent, you'll have to pay a price. If you go to the car dealership, you'll pay a price. If you want to go and buy a boat, it'll come with a price. If you want to go on luxury vacations, it comes with a price. So if you are serious about these things, being part of your life, and everyone's goals are different. We're not here to tell people what to, what to want, but the premise is, that everything that you want in life generally has a price. Even if you want to spend all your time actually giving to charities and giving money away, you still have to have an income to support yourself in order to do that. So wealthy people have basically learned the principle of putting money to work. And what they do is they basically generate passive income that's equal to an amount of working capital that's earning profits. Now, I haven't been in this, in this home-based industry for now nearly 33 years. I can say, particularly in these modern times, that the magic number for a lot of people is around 10,000 US dollars a month. So you can I'm, I'm equate that to your currency. But in most countries around the world, 10,000 a month would be the start of a good quality of life. It would certainly put you in the top 5% or more of income earners in that country. Well, that's simply 100,000 of capital going to work at 10% per month. 250K at 10% is going to generate a 25K per month. That's, that's, that's good money. That's certainly upgrading a quality of life. And 100K a month. Now, a lot of people would actually, actually struggle with that concept of earning that sort of money because they don't think they deserve it or they've never seen anything even close to that. And they don't, they don't know if people earn that sort of money, but it's simply a million dollars worth of capital at 10% per month. That gives you hundred K. Now we know we've got a vehicle with Daisy, like the Forex trading, for example, that after performance fees would net you a 10% per month or more. So we've got the vehicle to achieve that. You just need to have the capital. And you generally fall into one or two camps. You already have the money or you need to create it. So how do you create the funds to work for you that would be earning you passive results in your to create your dream passive income? How do you create those funds? Well, you actually build a community and leverage the DAISY referral pay plan is one way to do it do that. And there's different ways to generate income from that. There's the upfront income as people actually contribute to the crowdfund. So as they contribute and, and purchase their crowdfunding tiers, that creates immediate revenue that's paid out to the actual line of introduction and the referral. And there's the backend income as the trading generates trading rewards, that's going to give that additional income, whether that's the performance fee being deducted every six months or when somebody decides to withdraw their trading rewards at any time. And of course, the other way to build capital is to basically top up, You know, take some money out of your salary or your current business, whatever it is you do to generate income and add additional tiers. We know that you can go back and actually acquire more of the previous tiers that you've, you've got already. You don't have to necessarily spend more and go up to a higher tier. So, what are the desired outcomes for today's session? Well, they say that the teacher appears when the student is ready. So I'm really proud of you for taking time out of your weekend to join me today to understand some of the principles that have been taught to me by people who are even more successful than I've been. One of the outcomes we're going to teach you is proven 
principles that have created five, six, and seven figure earners again and again. Another outcome we're going to teach you is systems and strategies that create large communities and significant team volumes. An actual large community and a significant team volume will lead to large amounts of income. You'll learn how to succeed in any company, any pay plan, with any product, never having to do a presentation. I'm talking about not having to go through a slide deck or a PowerPoint or go online and start presenting full daisy presentations. What I'm teaching you today, you could take away and apply to any solid opportunity and make it work, regardless of plan, product, or company. And I can tell you, you know, over this last few years, I've built incomes to multiple tens of thousands per month to hundreds of thousands per month without having to do any full presentations. It's all based around this principle, what we call the community builder's wheel. We're not here to build teams or networks. We're here to actually build a community. It's a, it's a, it's a word that people can relate to, and it really sums up what we're all about. Because the Daisy Crowdfund community as a venture capital group, that's what we are. We're an actual community raising funds for projects. And this creates a systematic approach to actually building a community that will maximize your potential for duplicatable, sustainable results. Ask yourself, is, isn't that what you want? Duplicatable, sustainable results. So it all starts off with setting goals. Now, some of these aspects of this, I'm not going to go into great detail. I'm going to focus on a couple of core components because we can spend a lot of time just on goal setting. But basically, goals simply need to be written down. There is overwhelming evidence that goals that are written down have a much greater opportunity to become reality than those who are just in our head. And they need to have timelines that are very specific, and they need to be backed by a compelling why for achieving that goal. There has to be something that gets you out of bed in the morning, no matter what comes your way, that makes you want to achieve that goal. Most people are either driven by by, um, by moving away from pain or gaining pleasure. So either there's enough aggravation and frustration and pain in your life to make you want to do something that's going to change that, or you have a strong desire to have a much more pleasurable outcome. Without a target, you have nothing to aim for. You've got to have clear goals. That's why at the start I said every goal has a dollar value to it. So here's an exercise that helped me. That just You can just write this down and the recording will be available as well. Wake up and actually describe what it will be like in a day of your perfect life in vivid detail, describing all the senses. Imagine. You've actually moved, as far as a time machine, you've gone ahead in time, two years, five years, 10 years, whatever it is going to take to, to get to your dream life. And describe in vivid detail, write it down, the bedroom you'll be waking up to. What would you be looking at when you look, look outside? Would it be the beach? Would it be forest? Would it be mountains? Would it be a river? Would it be a lake? How many bedrooms in your house? How big's the kitchen? What color schemes? Is it one story? Is it two stories? When you walk out into your garage, what car is sitting in your garage? What have you got planned for that day? What are you doing in that dream life? What things do you own and possess? And what sort of person have you become, actually become? Write down how you feel about yourself, about your self level of self-esteem and success and how other people see you. This is a really important exercise to imagine what it would be like. Because then all you're going to do is work backwards of what you need to do to make that your reality. The second exercise I found really helpful for me is to create a budget to maintain that best life as if it was your reality. So imagine if I said to you that you can have the income, that I will fund your income for your dream life, but you have to give me a budget in the next hour down to the cents and dollars of what it's going to cost to sustain that. What's it going to cost to manage that house, your motor vehicles, your boat, your food, the entertainment, your vacations, the insurance, all those sort of things. See, 
most people never get into the detail because they don't really believe they're going to achieve their goals. Without the specific detail, it's just a wish, it's a hope, and it will never become your reality. But if you are going to the car yard and I said, I will buy you your car, but you need to describe in vivid detail in the next two minutes about that car, everything about it, otherwise you don't get it. I guarantee 99% of people would not be able to do that in vivid detail. Vivid detail is what makes that your reality. The second step is once you now define what you're working towards is develop a list. Now, a lot of people, again, they actually hesitate about this, but I want you to look at your list as not a list of names. This is your capital. Your money is not your capital because everybody enters this opportunity with different amounts of money. Some of you are, were lucky to put together $100 and some could easily put together 100,000 or more. So if you're basing your success upon your starting amount of money, it's an unequal playing field. But everybody can create the same amount of capital when it comes to making a list. Open up your phone and I guarantee there'll be tens, if not hundreds of names that are on that phone. Look at your Facebook account, your Instagram account, your WhatsApp list. I'm guaranteed there'll be tens, if not hundreds of names. The more names you have, the less likelihood you're going to burn through your capital. See, people think they're going to burn through their money. You don't want to burn through your list. You want to be constantly adding to the list, and that's your real capital. Ask any successful entrepreneur, and they will tell you the most valuable asset that they or a business owns is not their stock, their inventory, it's their database. Their database is their asset. You can actually have your business actually burned down to the ground, but as long as you've got the database, you can rebuild again. Keep in mind that you only need 24 personally referred members to maximize this referral opportunity, and you can only effectively work with four to 10 people. Yes, online marketers will go out there and they'll recruit tens, if not hundreds, even a thousand plus people, but they seldom build duplicatable businesses that expand the way I'm going to show you today. The reality is that myself and my coach and other strong leaders, we only work with between four and six people and probably 10 at the most at any one time. Any effective leader of competence, and particularly somebody who's new, can't work with more than that. So don't think that you need to bring in personally hundreds of people to be successful. The reality is, I can tell you after an actual career of 32 years, going on 33 years, is that 70 to 80% of top income earners come from two to five people in your community. Yep, that's right. 70 to 80% will come from two to five people, and they won't always be the people that you have referred. In one of my businesses five years ago, where we built a seven-figure income in five months, one person that built 70% of our volume came in four generations below the person who I referred. And we've worked together ever since. So that's an important thing to keep in the bottom of your mind. It's not who you know, it's who they know and who they know and who they know that ultimately will lead you to the people that are going to create your success. I next want to talk about the approach. The purpose of the approach is to see if somebody is in the looking zone. You may not have heard that term before, but people move in and out of the looking zone all the time. So understand that a no is never a permanent no. It is not about convincing. A lot of people say, oh, I can't convince people to join. I can't convince them to do this and I can't convince them to do that. Well, stop trying to convince people. That's where you're going wrong. It's a sifting and sorting business. It's, about, it's not about getting into the detail or presenting the opportunity when you're doing the approach. It's about determining if they are open and looking for an opportunity. It's about setting up a time to do an initial introduction. Too many people are getting on an on initial approach and trying to talk about blockchain and cryptocurrency and 
trading technologies and strategies and how crowdfunding works and how the pay plan works. No wonder you're having no success. That's not what it's about. The approach is simply to see if they are looking for opportunity. And your role is to find those people who are in the looking zone and understand that people are moving in and out of looking zone all the time. Many years ago, I, if I was a massage therapist. I was working as a massage therapist in my early career. And I had a patient who was very successful working for a, a very large pharmaceutical company. Her husband worked in the building industry, was very successful. And she'd come in every week for a massage. And for six years, she'd say to me, hey, Michael, how's that network marketing thing of yours going? In a sort of a reasonably condescending approach. But I never took it personally. Then all of a sudden, she got pregnant twice in a period of 10 months. The building industry crashed. And she came into me six years later and said, tell me about that network marketing thing. People come in and out of the looking zone all the time. You've just got to find them when they're there. So stop trying to convince somebody who's not in the looking zone and look for those who are. The approach, here's a few tips. And again, I won't go into this in detail today. I'm going to do a separate session, particularly on this, because it's an area that a lot of people fall down in. But you need to state why you are calling. Hi, John. I'm calling you because, because I want to share something that I've come across. I want to, I'm calling you because I found something that I think that really benefit you and I. It may be for you and it may not, but I wouldn't be sharing it with you if I didn't think it was of value to do. I always take it away. I never assume that it's for them. It's sifting and sorting. Are they in the looking zone? So I don't know if they are. So I let them know that it may not be for you. It may not be the right time, but I wouldn't be, but I care enough about you that I, I want to make sure you get the chance to look at it. Your purpose is to get them on a three-way call with your line of introduction. That could be your referrer or could be somebody further up the line of introduction who has more experience. Don't get into the details in the approach. The approach is simply to get them on a Zoom where you're prepared with somebody else who's going to be the third party expert. Okay, but what is it? Hey, John, look, I'll explain everything on the call. I can't get into it now. I've got a lot of calls to make. I look forward to seeing you Tuesday at four o'clock. You're going to love what you hear. And like I said, it may or may not be for you, but I think at least make an informed decision. That's all we're trying to do. Get them on a call with somebody else because you, that way you can have somebody who's totally brand new get started. Edify your line of introduction who will be on the call you've arranged. I can't wait for you to meet Michael or meet Joe or meet Mary or meet Sue. You know, they're doing so well with this and they've been so down to earth. There's no BS. You know, they really tell it straight and they've, they're doing really well and they've helped a lot of people. I, I'm sure we're going to love meeting them and, and enjoying what I've enjoyed with them as well. Be excited and enthusiastic. You know, if you don't believe in it, why should they? So you've got to have your own level of excitement and actual enthusiasm and internal belief, but don't hype it up. Don't exaggerate. You don't need to oversell it. You don't need to overpitch it. Zoom or video call is best or in person. Now, I'm in Thailand where I live. I don't have a large local base. And because of my, my particular visa status, I don't do business in my own country. So, I, And to be honest, for the last 10 years, I have not built any business in my home country. I've built it internationally. Um, you know, partly the fact, the fact that I pay zero tax on my foreign sourced income is, is a good reason as well. But the point is 80% of communication is voice and body language. If you think that sending a very clever email or a text message is the way to engage people, you're realizing that actual communication, and I'm really good at creating content. I would be regarded as somebody who's quite talented at creating written content. But even though that's only 20% of communication, your voice, your body language, your facial expressions communicate 80%. You also get to see if they're actually paying attention to you, see if they're looking at you. Because if you're just chatting with them on a voice call, they could be patting the dog, babysitting the kids, looking at the television set, watching the football. You know, they're not actually listening to you at all. But on a video call or in person, you've got their full attention, at least you know where they are or not. Approach people you have trust and rapport with first and preferably in your own time zone. Not always applicable, but it will make it easier for a brand new person getting out of the gate. 
So now we're going to talk about the next stage, stage of the wheel. And this is one where we'll get into detail in a few minutes. It's about sharing the offer. And we call this the initial introduction. But it is simply a conversation. It's not a presentation. Again, we're not interested in going through the DAISY PowerPoint. We're not interested in getting into all the details of the pay plan. Okay? It's a conversation. The initial introduction is about building rapport, doing a reality check, offering a solution, and closing and getting them started. All we need to tell people is we found a way where they can put their money to work rather than working for money. On, on average, it's netting you know, around the 10,000, uh, sorry, 10% plus a month. And if they haven't got a lot of capital, we can help them create the capital as well. That's it. Don't need to get any more detail than that. Invite and leverage your line of introduction to do the talking. This is how you learn and how a new person can immediately start with building their own personal community. You want to get somebody else doing the talking for you. <coughs> Excuse me. So I said, I will get into a lot of detail on this particular sharing the offer. I think it's a really important aspect. Follow-up. The money is in the follow-up. Focus on building the relationship and it's about asking, answering questions and probing for more information on what they want. Three-way calls are the optimal way to do follow-up. You want to get the experts in front of your prospects. You want to edify them and just listen and learn. Let me ask you a question. If you were creating a world-beating soccer team, would you leave and you had the number one player in the world available? Would you put him on the bench? Would you put a, would you put a, this famous soccer player, Cristiano Ronaldo, on your bench and not be playing the game? Of course you wouldn't. You'd be an absolute idiot to do that. But most people are talking to people, not putting their experts in front of the people when they begin. Nobody expects you to understand everything at the beginning. You should be working with the line of introduction with your more experienced leadership. And then you get them started. And this is all about BAMFAM. BAMFAM stands for book another meeting from a meeting. Never finish a meeting or closing somebody and getting them started without arranging and booking their next or their first initial uh, um, introduction. The sooner they experience the pay plan, the better. You want to show the system in action. Don't preach the system. Show them the system. Help new members introduce their first new member. Help them make some money quickly and have them commit to the system. The system is what drives this. Not skill, not talent, not good looks, not the gift of the gab, not being able to talk people into things. It's system driven. So that's an overview of the actual community builder's wheel. I now want to sort of enlarge this. And I want to go down a, a, a road that will help you to visualize this. And it's called Daisy's Got Talent. And what are you in this business? People ask you what you do. Well, one expression that I've used often is I'm a talent scout. Oh, so what are you looking for? I'm looking for motivated people who are serious about changing their life, about living their best life. I'm, I'm a talent scout. I'm looking for the right people. I'm very clear about who I'm looking for. I'm not looking for desperate people. I'm not looking for somebody who's going to give me every objection under the sun. I'm looking for motivated, independent people who are actually self-starters and serious about changing their future. America's got talent. You can learn a lot from this TV show in regard to how to attract new members. Notice my language there, how to attract, not convince, not sell, not trying to talk somebody into something. So what's their aim? Their aim is to search for talent. They have no emotional attachment to who auditions or if the person progresses. Hint, hint. That should be your approach. No emotional attachment to who wants to be involved and whether they decide to get involved. Their mission is to sift and sort. 
not to convince people to audition, not convince them to participate in the competition. Same as not your job to convince people to look at this or convince people to get involved. They know their platform can launch careers and change the lives of participants. Same as Daisy and many opportunities. Daisy is proven that it can generate multiple five, six, and even seven figure incomes in its first 18 months. It's not on trial. It, it, it is shown that it can do that. People have real evidence of that. Same as America's Got Talent. They know their show can launch. So, so it, the day's opportunity can help you get to where you need to go. You're a talent scout looking for people seeking a change, a chance to change their life. Just like an actual contestant, they're looking for an opportunity to change their life, to live their dreams and live a life of purpose. Sift and sort, not convince. Lose the emotional attachment to the outcome. Fall in love with the process and divorce yourself from the result. Fall in love with the process and detach yourself, divorce yourself from the result. Some of you are so hung up on having to get somebody into your business. That's not what it's about. Let people decide. Don't be responsible for their decision. Otherwise, they'll hold you accountable for their decision. People come from far and wide, from all backgrounds, to have their moment to shine on America's Got Talent. Some people just don't have what it takes, just like Daisy. Some people just don't have what it takes. They have all the wrong mindset, all the wrong attitude. They're already looking to self-sabotage their success before they even start. Some people just don't make the cut. This opportunity is open for everybody, but it's not for everybody. Okay? It's open to everybody, but not for everybody. Some people in, in America's Got Talent get the yes and get a chance to show what they're made of. Every so often, there is a golden buzzer participant who blows them away. Just like when you're sifting and sorting out there, you'll come across somebody who you didn't expect who will just blow you away. And you thought, where has this person been all this time? But not all golden buzzer winners are finalists. I want to share with you the Cody Lee story to give you an example, I'm going to play a short video for a few minutes and how about how never judging a book by its cover. So let's get started. Hey! Welcome. Hello. Welcome to America's Got Talent. What's your name? I'm Cody. Hi, Cody. I'm Cody D. I am 22 years old. Yeah. Who are you, miss? Who are you? I'm mom. Oh, I'm hi, Tina mom. Lee. What are you going to do here for us today? I'm going to sing a song for you on the piano. Tina, tell us a little bit about Cody. Cody is blind and autistic. Oh. Wow. We found out that he loved music really early on. He listened and his eyes just went huge. And he started singing. And that's when I just, I was in tears because that's when I realized, oh my gosh, he's an entertainer. <laughs> Through music and performing, he was able to withstand living in this world because when you're autistic, it's really hard mm -hmm. to do what everybody else does. It actually has saved his life playing music. <laughs> Go for it. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> in my life and time I've sung a lot of songs and I've made some bad rhymes I've acted on my life in stages 10,000 people watching yeah we're alone now and I'm singing this song to you I love you in a place oh there's no space or time I love you from my life you're 
Listen, what just happened there was extraordinary. I mean, really extraordinary. And thank you so much for trusting us on this show. I'm going to remember this moment for the rest of my life. Thank you. I'm a new judge this season, and I'm also a new mom this year. And congratulations. It's the toughest job I've ever had and the most rewarding job I've ever had. You just want to give your kids the moon, the stars, and the rainbows. And tonight, I'm gonna give you something special. Climb every mountain, mm, swim every ocean, just to be with you, and fix what I broken. Cause I need you to see First impressions, you would think that he doesn't have what it takes, but he got the golden buzzer. He was a brilliant singer. And he, in fact, he went all the way through to the finals of America's Got Talent. Nobody knows who Cody really is when they were looking at him when he first walked on stage or his story or why he loves what he does. Most people are a Cody full of potential, needing the right stage engaging with the right people to make their mark in the world. 33 years ago, or 32 years ago, when I got involved in network marketing, I had a stutter. I could barely get my name out meeting people. Like, you know, public speaking was terrifying. You wouldn't have picked me as somebody who would be successful in this referral home-based industry. Never judge a book by its cover. When somebody has the will to change their life, and to make something of their life, they will go through hell and back to make that their reality. In fact, too often the people with the talent are the ones that are lazy because they rest on their talent. They don't have to try so hard. And so they don't, they're not really motivated. They're a bit arrogant, a bit cocky. But the people who are hungry will do well. You want to get the backstory when you're having that initial in introduction with somebody. Everybody's got a story to tell that will reveal who they are, what they want, and where they want to go, and why they want all that. What is their form? Family, occupation, recreation, and money. These are the four key things you want to get to know about people. Family, the top priority for most people. If you ask them what's their most important thing, it'd be family. Married, single, divorced, got kids, because all that can say a lot about their position in life. If they're married, you want to have their partner there. Or if they're in an actual relationship, because the last thing you want to do is have them show up and go home and try and tell their, their partner how enthusiastic they are and they know nothing about it and they pour a bucket of cold water on. Ask them, do you get to actually hang out a lot with your family? That'll indicate whether they'd like to spend more time and their time poor. How old are your children? Are they school age? Are they going to college? You know, that'll give you an indication of what potential costs are coming up. You know, do they go to a public school or a private school? Oh, we'd love to put them in a private school, but we can't afford it. There's a hint. The career path for your children. What do they think about doing when they leave school? Oh, they, they want to go to university. You know, so 
that's going to cost you a lot, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I don't know how we're going to pay for that. Or they want to become an airline, airline pilot, whatever it is they want to become. Occupation. It's where most people spend the, last major, the vast majority of their time in their working life. What do you do for a living? Been doing that for very long? Have you always done that? I want to find out what led them to that. What led them to that career? Do they really like it? If you could go back in, in as far as as far as a time machine and choose something else, what would you have done? What's the end game for where you are now? Are you actually getting a promotion? Is opportunities to go further up in the opportunity in the, in the business you're involved in, or in the the bricks and mortar business that you own? Are you looking to expand, open up other outlets? Are you looking to be the big boss? Recreation. This is the enjoyable part of life. What do you do for fun? What do you and the family do for fun on the weekends? Got any hobbies? How often do you get to do that? Now, how often since they last had some fun as a family on a weekend? Oh, we just don't have time. We don't have the money anymore. Where do you like to go on vacation? What sort of vacations? Where'd you go for your last vacation? How long since you did that? They'll tell you a lot. Do you like to go to the same place? We'd like to mix it up when you go away on your vacations. What's your dream vacation look like? I'm just having a conversation over coffee, over a Zoom, finding out about this person. You've all had these conversations with people. So when you're sifting and sorting, you're not trying to sell them. You're just getting to know what makes this person tick. Money. Did you read about that guy who actually won the lottery last week? What would you do if you won that much money? Are you the Lambo guy or are you the Range Rover type guy? Would you keep living where you are now if you won a lottery or would, if you made it really big? What's on the bucket list of things to do for you and the family? I want to find out what their, their big picture looks like. What are their dreams? Some people don't want the Lambo. Some people don't want the, the, the big mansion or the, or the super yachts or whatever it is. They want other things. They want to create experiences They're, uh, as far as the adventurous type. Then you need to do the reality check. What's going on in their life right now? Again, having a conversation. Who's had a conversation like this in recent times? How did you go with the COVID thing the last few years? Did it have much effect on your finances, on your job, on your business? Oh, the, I can only tell you. Yeah, we, we, in our business, we had to as far as let go of half our staff or my bosses. As far as retrenching a lot of people, I don't know if I'm next. Did you see how they're saying that, sorry, should be inflation, not migration? <laughs> inflation is 9% plus. You know, that means you need to make 10% a year on your money just to keep your money at the same value. How are you managing with the cost of fuel these days? I think after I actually go to the bank, I'm going to get a loan just to fill my petrol tank up. Have you noticed that food's going up in the, all the time? I probably need to go and grow some veggies in my backyard. Keep it light. Keep it actually humorous, but get to the reality of where they're at in life. And then help them experience the reality of Daisy and say, well, how serious are you about achieving those outcomes? On a scale of one to 100, how much do you want that to be the reality? How would you feel if you got another five years down the track and nothing had changed? Would that be satisfactory for you? Or are you at a point where you sort of want to do something about that? You want to make that your reality. That's it. I'm just looking for a commitment. I'm looking for, are they in the looking zone, looking for change in their life? Then just get them started. Download the TronLeak app or the Chrome extension. Load USDT and TRX. Get them involved tier one and let them upgrade as well if they choose to. Then book the next meeting from the meeting. Okay, so John, who's the first person that comes to mind based on what I share with you today that you think would immediately see the value in this? Let's make a time to have a chat to that person, having a conversation. Just having a conversation. We're not here to sell them. We're not here to sign anybody up. We're not here to... Get them to invest, which is having a conversation to see if John's most likely candidate is interested. And I want to help them experience the referral pay plan as soon as possible. Because if I can get them earning their first commission within a matter of a day or so, 
then they're going to experience that for real. And I say, look, that was what they're going to say. That wasn't, wasn't too hard, was it? Okay, who's the next person? And who's the next person? And one by one, I'm going to be building an income for them brick by brick. So now I want to talk about how to build a fast-growing, large community and how to structure your community. Because there's a lot of different theories about this, and I want to base this on decades of experience, also working with other people who've built, like me, sizable teams who track their numbers. We track everything. We track all our stats of our team, our personal volume, our personal efforts, everything we do, we measure it. We know what's happening in our business all the time. So when most people look at these home-based businesses, you think that a team structure is this, they pitch this perfect pyramid-like structure. People promote, oh, you find five and they find five and they find five and they find five and they find five. And look, you got all these thousands of people in your organization. Oh, that's one of those pyramid programs, isn't it? Well, the reality is every government, every large organization, every big business on the planet has an organizational structure like that, where there's five management actually reporting to the CEO. There's five actually sub-managers reporting to each of those managers and so forth until we got 3,000 plus people at the bottom who are doing their normal jobs. And, and they're all responsible to somebody else as well. But the reality is that this is how most people's businesses actually look. They end up in a coffin shape, not a pyramid shape. And this is based on evidence of tracking multiple organizations of tens of thousands of people multiple times. Most people will have the majority of their network, of, of their actual personal community on the fourth level when they begin. As you grow your organization and expand it, it'll, you'll probably get that growing to level five and six. But that's where the bulk of people are. So people ask you, are you in pyramid sales? No, I'm in the coffin business. Okay. You're not in pyramid sales. You're in the in, in, in you're in a you're in the actual dead end of the dead end of town. You're in the coffin business. Because that's the reality of how your team structure will look like. And if you've got every leader in Daisy to have a look at their personal referral team, you would find this would be the shape of their business. Now you can have different shaped coffins. Somebody who only refers a few people and duplicates will probably have a narrow coffin like this one. Now, there's less profit in a narrow one, but it still can produce a good income. But you might have a wider structure, a bigger, a fatter coffin that is more profitable. You go basically width for profit and depth for security of income. So the wider you go personally in your referrals over time, not about recruiting hundreds of people, but ultimately developing more leaders frontline, that'll create, end up leading to more profit, but your depth in your business will provide the actual security of income. So I want to talk to you about a, this is a fundamental change for a lot of people. And in this picture, there's a few things here. There's you, and LOI is your line of introduction. Line of introduction is the person who introduced you to Daisy and the person who introduced them and the person who introduced them and so forth all the way up through the line of introduction. And through that line of introduction, there'll be people there who will be successful and competent enough to help you. And this person, you, has referred Dave. Okay, so Dave is the first team that you're building and your target the C is what we call double I's, initial introductions. Remember, initial introductions are not presentations. They're having a conversation about form, the reality check, presenting the actual solution and getting them started. That's all. Okay, they can learn as they go along. And the goal is to get doing, having your line of introduction, doing three to five initial introductions with you and having Dave watch what you do. So when you bring in your line of introduction, it's not saying, oh, here's a bunch of my people, you go and talk to them. No, you're on those 
initial introductions, then you're learning. The best way to learn is to see it in action, to see how your line introduction handles the objections, moves the person into a process of getting started, and you're learning on the job. So Dave has got his friend Bill, and you've helped Dave do initial introduction with Bill, and we're going to help Bill duplicate. And in Orange, you say key people will identify themselves by their actions and their attitudes. Stop trying to second guess who's going to be successful. Stop assuming that people who were successful in the past will be successful in the future. I can tell you, most people just happen to be in the right place at the right time and the right opportunity, but they don't even know how they became successful because they don't, don't systemize what they do and they didn't understand a process. And that's why the next opportunity, they're not in the right place at the right time and they can't replicate that success. And now they go looking for something that's apparently meant to be easier. You can get it all for free. You don't have to do anything. We're going to build it all for you. And that's why they go down a spiral of going into a, a situation where it isn't up not being successful ever again. What I'm trying to do is put a bit of fire under Bill, which also by helping Bill, I'm putting income in the hands of Dave. Now, I'm going to be also helping Dave with his second person, Mary. So you imagine I'm the one who's, it's me, I'm helping Dave. So I'm helping Bill talk to one of his contacts. And now I'm working in depth and I'm putting fire on everybody. So now Bill's going to see some money. Dave's going to see another paycheck and I'm earning as well. And I'm also working with Mary. That's Dave's second person. So remember, my goal is to do about three to five introductions for Dave to show him what to do. And Dave is on that. Dave might not understand much right now. He could, he could be totally new to the industry. It doesn't matter. He's just doing the approach and getting me in front of his people. I've now helped Bill get a second person. And again, that's putting fire under Bill. It's putting a bit of fire under Dave. Dave's saying, this is pretty good. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing yet, but I can see the money coming in. This is looking really good. I'm not racing off to build my second team yet. I may have come across somebody more, but it's not my focus. I'm not like, oh, gee, I've got to rush out there and bring in lots of bills straight away. No, I'm building, I'm anchoring this team. I've now gone and helped number two to bring in one of his people. I've gone and done initial introduction for number two here under Bill with his third person. Again, now I've got fire under three. I've got a in income for I'll join income for number two for Bill and Dave. Dave's saying, Wow, this is really good. This just keeps making me money. This is, I think this is actually working, Michael. And now it's like Dave's got another person. Now, hey Michael, can you help me with this person? It's like Dave, you know what? I can't help you right now because I'm busy working down under Bill. It's time for you now to step up and start working with this person. You've watched me do one, two, three, four initial introductions. Time for you to start to do this. Oh, but Mike, I'm not sure if I can. It's okay. You know how easy it is. You watch me do it. It's not that complicated. Keep it simple. It's just a conversation. I'm now working further down. Okay, I'm now putting a fire under number four. And that puts a fire under number three, and number two, and under Bill and Dave. And Dave's making more money, and he's got another person. Oh, Michael, can help me. I've got another person interested. Dave, you know what to do. Just do the simple, follow the system, the initial introduction, just like we, we did it with other people. I'm busy helping you down here. I'm, I'm, a, I'm helping your, your team, Bill. I'm helping this other person down below them. Okay? You want to... At some stage, you've got to kick people out of the nest and make them responsible. It's not about you build it for them. It's showing them by modeling the right behavior. I'm now going even further and I'm working down underneath number four and helping them bring somebody in. Five levels down. Dave, one, two, three, four, five levels down. I'm almost down to six levels down. And Bill has suddenly shown up. He's like, hey, this is not too hard. I love this. He's now brought a second person in and he, he's not needing me to do everything so much for him. He's already started to show up. He's shown up by his actions and his attitude. And Dave needs to start working with his team 
helping them do the initial introductions. So Dave's been kicked out of the nest and he's starting to build his width. Okay, so he's bringing in more people and I'm still working down and now Bill's bringing in more people. Now, if this was all about you, how many initial introductions could I possibly do in a week? Maybe I can do, you know, if I've got a normal job or a business, I might be able to do one or two a day, five or six days a week. So I might be able to do 10 at the most in a week. Pretty tough stuff going. But now I've got Dave doing initial introductions. So what if he's aiming for 20 for the month? And what if Bill's aiming for 20 for the month? I've now got people in my organization who are replicating me and I've now got leverage. I've got tens of people being spoken to that I have nothing to do with. I have no relationship with them. I don't know who they are, but I've shown Bill and I've shown Dave by example what to do. And now Sue's turned up. She says, Michael, get out of my way. This is really fun. I can do this. She's bringing in people. She's doing initial introductions. Bill's on fire. Helen's shown up. She's now introducing people. Helen's doing initial introductions. Look at the leverage that I've got in this team. Do you think that team's going to stop? Well, the best way to ensure it's not going to stop is get the, the depth because when there's enough fire under enough people and they've seen the evidence of this working, then they're not going to go away. Nobody's going to walk away from income. Now, up the top here, it says you can coach two to three people per team. Dave is one team. So I personally work with, I said, even though I'm a seasoned professional, I still only work with about 10 people maximum. And they're not necessarily all my front line. This is not about, don't think that you'll be coaching everybody. Not everyone's worth coaching. You work with those who are doing the work. So I might be coaching Helen and I might be coaching Bill or Sue, depending on who's really showing up, who's worthy, who's going to commit to doing the work. And this leg is now growing well. So I'll be looking to start going and focusing on my T number two. Now you have a team that's all doing initial introductions to tens, even hundreds of people. Imagine if you had a hundred people in your community who are all doing 10 to 20 initial introductions a month. A hundred people doing 10 a month would give you a thousand new people, a thousand new people that are being presented to. Not present, sorry, presented to, having initial introductions, being shown enough to help them make a decision. But see, too many people are trying to do this all on their own. And see, now Dave's stepped up. He's like, okay, I get it now, Michael. I know what to do. You've shown me enough and I can see it working. And he's got busy. And now you're working over here with your second team with Jane and going to replicate the same thing. You're going to help Jane bring somebody in and help that person bring somebody and help that person bring somebody. And I'm going to work depth under Jane and make sure that she's rock solid. Now, Jane may not necessarily be the person I coach. Maybe she's only doing it very casually. She put a few people in, but there's someone underneath her that is going to show up like Bill or like Sue or like Helen, right? You, you go where the fire is. Don't try and put somebody on fire. Don't pour gasoline on them. Let them self-ignite. They need to show you they're on fire. Don't artificially try and create the fire. So that's basically what you do to build a sustainable business and team and community that, that creates self-sufficient, independent people who are working a system but working with a line of introduction. It's a simple replicatable system. It's not about how much experience you've got, or how much knowledge you've got, how much money you've got. Anybody can, can follow that and replicate this. Now, what's the end game to maximize your daisy income? Well, basically, in the end, you're looking for 24 people and 128K of personal referral contributions from those people towards the crowdfund. 
That's the end game. But don't be in a rush to go and do that too quickly because some people are racing to get 24 people. And by the time they've got there, the first 20 people they brought in have no idea what's going on because nobody gave them any attention. Nobody shown, showed them how to duplicate. And they've lost their fight. They've lost their enthusiasm. They don't know what to do. And you, it's very hard to reignite somebody who's had a bucket of cold water thrown on them. Or maybe they went and talked to a few people without having any interaction with more experienced people. And they've had somebody pour water on them. And it's pretty hard to bring them back. Each person find out what they really want and help them experience the referral pay plan. So for example, tier one, which is the $100 contribution, whether it's crypto or Forex, obviously Forex is the sexy thing right now. There is zero qualifications for that. You can earn on all 10 levels, which is a potential 80,000 plus people that you can earn on without any qualifications. And everybody has tier one. You can't participate in DAISY unless you have got tier one, right? So everybody can maximize tier one. There's a lot of money to be made just in tier one. In tier two, which is the $200 contribution when you top up, your only qualification is how many people you've personally referred. Now, remember I said at the very, a few slides back that your team will have most of its volume initially or most of the people at level four. Well, how do you get to level four? You need to only have six personal referrals. So as you're initially working to build your community, now that can be just six customers. They don't all have to be active business builders. I might only have one active business builder, but I might have five people who just want to put some money to work. These personal referrals don't have to be people that are gung-ho about their referral opportunity. They can just be people who maybe just put 100 euros in or a couple hundred euros in or a couple of thousand in. We're not here to judge. But six referrals can get you all the way down to generation four and ultimately 24 people will get you earning on every level of the second tier matrix, the $200 contributions. And again, up to $80,000, $200 contributions you can earn on. Think about that. You can earn on up to 80,000 contributions in tier one and up to 80,000 contributions on tier two, just with 24 referrals without any volume requirements. From the third tier onwards, that's the, the $400 dollar contribution all the way up to the $50,000 plus contribution at tier 10, you need to have certain volume requirements. Remember we said most people will be at level four to begin with. Well, what I need to have, I need to have six referrals and 2,000 in volume. Okay. So that's just six people with basically three to $400 in volume. So they might have tier one and tier two, and some might have also tier three. Not a lot. We're not, we're not asking people to throw in tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is just a, a normal um, uh, thing that can happen. And you don't need to go all the way down to the bottom because you won't have people down at level 10 in the early stages. Okay? So this is what your potential structure will look like and where you should prioritize your time. Priority is... The bulk of your time, it's called the 80-20 rule. 80% of your results will come from 20% of your people. And, and, and basically, you're going you're gonna to focus. So you're focusing on your leaders, those four to six people who show up. And so they may not be personally referred by you. They may be in depth. And those people you're going to spend the vast majority of your time with. This, Sorry, go back. The second priority is the four to six builders. In other words, they said they want to build. They're not fully committed. They're a bit up and down with their actually showing up, but you'll still give them some time because they are working. But the priority one is the people that, are, that their actions meet their words. They're, 
the doers. They're the ones that are calling you and asking you for help. These second priority people aren't necessarily that way. The third priority is the casual builders. You know, every so often they come across somebody and when the right opportunity comes, they share it, but they're not really focused. They have no real clear intention to succeed. Priority one, people have an intention to succeed. Priority two, people like the idea and it's sort of serious. Priority three is like, yeah, when the, when the chance comes along, I'll share it, but I'm not that serious about it. And the rest of people will just be your customers. And that'll make up your 24 people. That's what will happen. So don't spend all the time trying to convince customers to be leaders. And don't spend all your time trying to convince casual builders to become leaders. Let leadership show up by their actions and by their mindset. Remember I said to you, 70 to 80% of top leaders' income generally comes from two to five people, not necessarily referred by them personally. Here's a real example of real numbers, okay? So this is the current results from this morning. We've got 162,000 not 169 people in the DAISY community. We've got 606 gold pay setters and 91 gold pay setter leaders. Pay setter leaders. Now, 0.37% of the entire community are pay setter golds. So don't get hung up if you feel like you missed the boat. Don't that becoming a gold pay setter. You can still make a lot of money. In fact, you can make more money than the average pay setter because many pay setters haven't learned how to build a community that replicates, that is actually sustainable, that's duplicating. And pay setter leaders are only less than half a percent, that 0.05% of the entire community. So don't get hung up if you're not a pay setter goal or pay setter leader. It's nice to have it. Yes, it's extra income. And in my account, Paysetter Gold accounts for about less than 7% of my income and Paysetter Lead a bit more because there's fewer of those people. But it's only a total of just over 14% of my total income. But my personal referral income, I didn't go out there and refer lots of people. I referred 36 people. A lot of those are just passive customers. They've just got some crowdfunding contribution. They're not interested in building. I'm working with no more than probably six to 10 people. But look where the bulk of my income is, the matrix income. This is the community income. This is from me replicating what I'm doing. Over th only three quarters of my income comes from the matrix. So my point is, is it really that important to be a pace at a gold or a pace leader? It's nice to have, but that title does not make you a leader and does not make you a top income earner. Anybody, whether you're just getting involved now or you've been involved since day one, if you can be pace at a gold and pace leader, fantastic. But that's not necessarily the priority because too many people are focusing on going wide and they're not building the depth. They're not building in a way that creates duplication and won't lead to this significant income that comes from building your community. These are real numbers, folks. Now, what's interesting, the unit level income is the income on the back end. That's where the performance fees taken out every six months. And we earn from that from our personal referral team, not our matrix, but our personal referral team. And also when people withdraw their trading rewards. Now, it's a small part of my income at the moment, but I believe in the next one to two years, that will become the most significant part of my income. Because every six months, imagine as everybody's contributing to Forex, the crypto AI will kick in, it'll start making profits. And then every six months, on every person, anybody's each personal anniversary, the performance fee is taken out and we're being paid. And as everybody withdraws their trading profits as well, their trading rewards, you're getting paid. And this back-end income happens on the same community. The same community is getting Forex tiers. The same community will have crypto tiers. And maybe if they move into other areas, other asset classes, we might be making from that as well. I don't know all the future plans. My point is this back-end unilateral income will become a significant part of my business, but it won't happen 
if I don't have a big community. So I've got a big community that generates most of my income. So that will ultimately generate. So, you know, you could be a pace at a goal with just 24 front line where you might have had one big investor and you're 24 people and you got nothing underneath that. That's not going to make you a big back end unilevel income on the trading rewards. And it won't build you a big matrix income. So don't be confused by titles. When you go into the bank to borrow money, you can't get a loan based on your rank of pace at a gold or pace of lever. They're going to ask you how much money are you making. That's all they care about. Or if you want to go and buy your dream house or your boat or your car or your vacation, you won't be able to buy that with your title. You'll be able to buy it with the income that you make. So the next step is all about taking action. Step one, work out what it is you actually want. And then ask yourself, write that down. Write down everything you would like to have, everything you'd like to be doing, and who you're going to become. And why do you want that? Ask yourself, why do I really want that boat? Why do I really want that car? Why do I want that home? Don't be tricked or fooled or feel compelled to write down what society thinks you should write down as a goal. You know, and as you go through life, your goals will change. I'm much more into creating experiences at this stage of my life, having my 60th birthday next year. You know, I'm more about experiences. I like nice things, but why I want things has changed from when I was in my 20s and 30s. When do I want it? Well, I want it more now than later. I'm not as patient anymore because I want to enjoy these things when I'm in the prime season of my life. Define these outcomes you want to achieve. Like I said, describe that vivid, in vivid detail that, that day in your perfect life I talked about at the very start. Write down and budget what your dream life is going to cost you in real numbers. Step two. Make your list. Remember, your list is your capital, not your money. Your money is not your capital. Your list of names. People are your best capital. The people are what will give you leverage. The people are what's going to give you passive income. The people is what's going to give you a large matrix income. The people is what's going to give you a large residual income. The bigger the list and the bigger the actual community you build, the bigger your capital. Stop looking at money as capital. People is the best capital. So the best investment you can make is not in money. Best investment you can make is in people. That's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. Connect with your line of introduction. I get in Daisy, and part of the reason I did the session today because I realized there's a lot of people who are feeling disconnected. And maybe they came in in the early days and the people who were involved, who brought them in, are no longer involved. They've disappeared. And I wanted to give you some sense of actual connection that there is a, as far as a larger group of leaders who want to at least provide you with the fundamentals to help you succeed. So you need to identify who to align with. Now, you may say, look, I don't, my personal referrer is dead in the water and I don't know who's above them. And you may need to do some, some, some searching to find out who they are or just plug in to any, any of the leadership groups that are available. And also, I said, we will, through our YouTube channel and uh, through our Facebook group, the Crowd Tycoons, Crowd Tycoons Facebook group and Crowd Tycoons YouTube channel, which are neutral groups. We don't have any referral links allowed in there. We run them very strictly. We don't allow anybody to post or comment about any, any opportunities. They are purely daisy focused. They're there for the broader community. You'll be able to get a lot of information like the recording of the session. So if you, you know, in an ideal scenario, you want to connect with the people in your line of introduction. Master the approach. And I'll, I'll, my next training will be focused on things like the approach. How do I make that first point of contact? Part of that is getting your own story right. So that's why I said you need to get clear about what you want, why you want it, and when you want it. Because that will help create your own story. The same as when you're doing the initial introduction with somebody, you're trying to find their story. You're trying to find out what they want from this. 
How can you help them get what they want if you can't identify what it is? And to be honest, most people don't know what they want because they're so busy trying to survive that they've forgotten how to dream. They've forgotten how to, how to, how to, how to, how to that they've lost their belief in what they really want. And remember, your job is to sift and sort. The approach is not to convince, it's not to sell, it's not to present. It's sifting and sorting, looking for people in the looking zone who are open to an opportunity, who are looking for an opportunity. But get your own story right first. You know, if somebody says, well, why are you involved in this? Oh, because it's um, it's crowdfunding and I, I love crypto and that's not why you're in it. You're not in this because it's crypto, because it's blockchain, because it's crowdfunding, because the it's got a matrix pay plan. You're in this because you're trying to get from A, where you are, to B, where you want to be. It's that simple. And whether that's just as a passive participant, putting your money to work or building your own referral community, the bottom line is that's why you got involved. You wouldn't put your money into something. You wouldn't put your time into something if you weren't trying to improve an area of your life. So everybody's reason for being involved is not because it's blockchain, not because it's crypto. It's because they're trying to get from A, where they are, to B, where they want to be. True? Step five, book the initial introductions with the help of your line of introduction. Leverage them. Get them on the three ways with you. Do these as video calls or in person or on a Zoom. Get that 80% of communication through body language, voice, facial expressions. Get real engagement. Stop trying to be clever with your social media posts and your emails and stop trying to be, uh, stop trying to um, opt out of getting in f and, and talking to somebody. You know, otherwise you're just in this email tag back and forth, this message tag back and forth, wondering why they're not engaging. Why aren't they um, re responding? Why aren't they getting interested? Why can't they see what I see? Because you haven't talked to them. So talk to them as a human being. I'm sure in the last two years, you've had conversations about how are you? How's things going? How's the job going? How's the family? How'd you go with COVID? How's your business going? How are the kids? What are, the, what are the plans for the kids? These are everyday conversations. Stop trying to think that you need to present the pay plan. You don't. I never present the pay plan. I never go into the details of the pay plan. Because it's like trying to say to the person who wants to buy the Lamborghini, you need to know the engineering under the bonnet before I'll sell you the car. The guy who buys the Lamborghini just wants to have the experience of driving the Lamborghini. It's how it makes him feel, not the engineering. Yes, it's a beautifully made car, it's, you know, and, and they're, they're, or, or Ferrari or an Aston Martin. But people buy them because of how it makes them feel, just like how they're going to feel when they go from A, where they are, to B, where they want to be, right? That's what people do things. So same with you. Your goals are attached to emotions. They have emotional reasons behind them. So have a, a real conversation with real people. Stopping a chicken and chickening out on talking to people. Stop trying to convince people. Get out of your own head. Get out of your own head. It's not about you. It's about them. It's not about you at all. Stop being, oh, I might be rejected. They might not like what I say. They might think it's a pyramid. They might think this. Stop overthinking it. Stop thinking. Just have a conversation with somebody. You're looking for somebody in the looking zone. Get them started. Get them into activity. Bam, fam, book a meeting from the meeting. Drive debt for income, for security. Income security comes through depth and width for profitability. And get them experiencing the reality of the referral pay plan. The sooner you do that, the sooner it becomes real. Then it you know, then they can't deny that it works. Oh, I don't know if this works yet. Well, let's 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 make it work for you. But don't try and make them know everything before they get started. If your spouse was pregnant and about to give birth, and you needed to get to the hospital urgently, and the and there's 
five cars outside. You don't care which car you get her there in. You just need to get her there. But guess what? If you don't know how to drive the car, you're no good to her. How can you help her if you don't know how to drive the car? Most people get involved in this industry and they don't know how to drive the vehicle. And all Daisy is is a vehicle to get you from A to B, A where you are, B where you want to be. It's just a vehicle. That's all it is. It's a good one, just a vehicle. But most people don't get taught how to drive. And if you're going to get taught to drive, wouldn't you want to get taught to drive by somebody with experience? Would you let your teenage teenage daughter or son get into a car to be taught by somebody who doesn't know how to drive a car? Would you? Of course you wouldn't. That'd be You'd be a very irresponsible parent. But why do people throw people into this and expect people to learn to know how to drive the vehicle when never been shown by anybody who's competent? This is why this community builder's wheel is so important. So we just worked on the outer wheel today and we made a major focus on just sharing the offer. There's a whole lot of other areas to touch on here and we'll, and we'll do additional sessions. Then it's once you've got the outer wheel mastered, it's about you know, listening to learn, listening and learning, reading, getting into a coaching relationship with other people, attending events like the, as, as far as the Dubai event with Daisy or any other big events that are on. There's been tours recently in Europe. There's one, I'm in Japan in early October, October 1. And also gaining industry and product knowledge. But, you know, what's going to put more money in your pocket? Watching videos about the latest price of Bitcoin or watching videos about the latest blockchain opportunity or actually just getting down and in conversation with somebody and showing them how to get from A to B. Choose where you spend your time. Make it productive, right? This community builder's wheel will ensure a systematic approach to community building and maximize your potential for duplicable, sustainable results. Sorry, duplicate. No, right. Remember, I want to leave you with this. No one should care about your money, your freedom, and your future more than you. We said at the very start, you, you were a person who is willing to make new decisions on your information. You own your decisions and you take responsibility for them. You came here with a teachable mindset. You came here to become successful. And you came here to give your undivided attention. I hope you did today. Stop looking for others to make successful. Stop blaming other people for your lack of success. Nobody should care about your money, your freedom, and your future more than you. Be an adult. Take responsibility for your money, freedom, and future and do something about it. And if you don't, that's okay. That's on you. No judgment, no criticism. That's a choice. We all have a choice of what we do. So, folks, um, I was planning to be somewhere in the hour and a quarter, hour and a half mark. So we're just getting to the hour and 20. Hope you enjoyed today's session. We will be doing more of these over time. But today was to give you just some foundational education. I will put the recording in our Crowd Tycoon's YouTube channel and in our Facebook group. You're welcome to be part of that. Again, understand that you know when you participate in our groups, you've got to play by the rules. And if you do that, you can enjoy all the benefits. So um, I said, it's not an interactive session today. I don't want to get into a q and I I just want to make sure that you receive that. I'd encourage you to watch the recording and follow the steps. You might want to watch it a couple of times. You know, when you're driving to and from work or you're on the train or the bus or you're going for your, for your morning walk, or whatever you do where you've got some time to kill, even if you just listen to the audio side of it, not so much the video, you know, because this is stuff that's based on my 32 years of experience in this industry. It's based on my coach who created a $200 million business in 16 months, built a 100,000 person team, pre-internet, pre-mobile phones. This is 
proven stuff that works again and again. I want to actually congratulate you for taking time out of your weekend. I hope you enjoyed today. Have a fantastic weekend. I look forward to sharing more information with you again soon. Take care. God bless.